The Buffalo Bills are a quarterback away from being a Super Bowl contender, but the question that needs to be answered is whether or not Josh Allen can be that quarterback. Allen was put into one of the worst situations a young quarterback can face when he was drafted by the Bills in 2018. He was a raw prospect with lots of potential, but to maximize that potential, he was expected to sit for a year or two behind an experienced quarterback before taking over the starting job. This obviously did not go as planned, however, because the Bills chose the Nathan Peterman route, which lasted less than one game. Allen, the guy who needed the most work out of any of the quarterbacks picked in the first round back in 2018, was already playing in his first pro game. His supporting cast for that 2018 season was horrible. He was pressured at the second highest rate in the league, and his top three receivers were Zay Jones, Robert Foster, and Calvin Benjamin, none of whom were anywhere near elite. Josh Allen was set up to fail in his rookie season, and as a result, his numbers were not impressive. He threw more interceptions than touchdowns, he averaged less than 175 passing yards per game, and he was dead last in completion percentage. But that rookie season caused us to see the potential Allen possessed not only as a passer, but as a runner as well. Among quarterbacks in 2018, Allen ranked second in total rushing yards, first in yards per carry, and first in rushing touchdowns. His offensive line couldn't pass protect, and his receivers couldn't get open, so defenses played a ton of man coverage. They knew that the Bills receivers weren't going to be able to beat their defensive backs one-on-one, -on -one, so they just man covered them, and it was effective in taking Allen's options to throw to away from him, but it made them much more vulnerable to a scrambling quarterback. Take this snap from Week 13 against the Dolphins as an example. It's first down and Miami is in a cover one with a linebacker blitz, meaning there's man coverage across the board and one of the linebackers will rush the passer. Because the defense is in man coverage, the defenders are all paying attention to their man rather than the quarterback, which is what they would do if they were in zone coverage. Allen rolls left, but since there are no defenders looking at him aside from the pass rushers, he's able to make a man miss and run for a first down. The reason Allen became a runner in the first place was because he couldn't rely on his receivers to create separation downfield, so instead of waiting for them to get open, he took matters into his own hands by rushing for over 600 yards. Allen's passing numbers were admittedly bad, but his rookie season let us see just how dangerous he could be with his legs rather than his arm. If the question is whether or not Josh Allen was a top-half quarterback in his first two seasons, the answer is no. His accuracy is inconsistent at best, and often causes the Bills to leave points on the board. But if the question is whether or not Allen can be a top-tier quarterback in the future, the answer has to be yes. There are three things that make me think Allen has a shot at being one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL five years down the road, which are he finds ways to win games, success with subpar accuracy is not unprecedented, and most importantly, he has constantly improved since coming into the league. As I was watching every snap from Allen's two-year career, one theme became more and more apparent. Josh Allen is a different player in the fourth quarter. He was the only starting quarterback in 2019 who didn't throw a pick in the fourth quarter, and he was tied for fourth in passing touchdowns in the fourth. His stats from quarters one through three don't even compare to his stats from the fourth quarter throughout the 2019 season. His completion percentage stayed pretty much the same, but his touchdown rate went up by almost 5%, which is ridiculous by the way, his interception rate dropped to zero, his yards per attempt average went up significantly, his sack rate came down significantly, and his overall passer rating was much better in the fourth quarter compared to the rest of his playing time. Allen's performance late in close games resulted in five game-winning drives, which was tied for the league lead with Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson. So even though his accuracy needs to improve for him to be considered elite, Allen has the clutch gene, which I would take over more consistent accuracy any day of the week. Situational performance is far more important than the basic quarterback metrics, and Allen has proven time and time again that he's at his best when it matters most. The narrative that formed after the playoff loss to the Texans was that Allen fell apart and failed to lead the team when it mattered most, but I don't really think this is true, so let's take a look at how Allen played late in that game, starting with this 3rd and 13 play, which was probably the defining play in this game. At this point, the Bills had just gone down 3 points and were driving down the field with 2 minutes left in regulation. The Texans came out in a double high safety look and called Tampa 2, which is a variation on cover 2 that has two deep safeties, two hook zone linebackers over the middle, two curl flat defensive backs on the outside, and one linebacker who drops deep to cover the seam in the middle of the field. The Bills called a dagger concept on a bunch right with six man protection and a check and release route from the running back. Dagger consists of a go route from the number 2 receiver, Isaiah McKenzie, and a deep dig from the number 1 receiver, John Brown, which is the route that's designed to get open. 
This concept is designed to attack cover 3, and is usually ineffective against a traditional cover 2, but because the Texans are in Tampa 2, the Mike linebacker drops deep into the seam hole, opening a gap over the middle for the dig route from John Brown. The route concept works to perfection downfield, and John Brown gets open ahead of the first down marker, but the pass protection fails and Allen gets an intentional grounding penalty. Pre-snap, the Texans lined up with seven possible blitzers, so to play it safe, the Bills put seven men in pass protection to avoid the possibility of an unblocked blitzer getting into the backfield for a free shot at the quarterback. Three of those seven possible blitzers drop into coverage, which leaves a four-man rush from the defense and a stunt on the right side of the screen. The left tackle, Deion Dawkins, was so focused on blocking one of the linebackers to his right side that he failed to even glance to his left and see Whitney Merciless get into the backfield unimpeded. Even the slightest chip from Dawkins at the last second would have given Allen enough time to hit John Brown on the dig route, but Merciless gets by Dawkins and Singletary and forces an intentional grounding penalty. So this play was a complete fail because of the pass protection, but at this point in the game there were still two minutes left to play, and the Bills had all three of their timeouts, so even after they failed to convert on fourth down, they got another chance with just over a minute left in regulation. After scrambling for 20 yards on first down, Allen and the Bills set up on their own 47-yard line, and since there's only a minute left to play and the Bills have no timeouts, the offense needs to find ways to get big chunks of yards and get out of bounds. The Bills jump ball receiver Duke Williams is lined up on the outside against press coverage running a go route, so when he takes a snap, Allen has one job, which is to figure out whether or not Duke Williams is isolated against single coverage. He can do this by keying the strong safety Mike Adams. If Adams rotates either down toward the line of scrimmage or to the deep middle of the field, there's only one deep safety, and Williams is up against single coverage. When Allen sees Adams rotate to the deep middle of the field, he knows that Duke Williams is isolated against single coverage and throws a perfect back shoulder fade to him on the sideline, but Williams just fails to make the play. This was perfect coverage recognition and ball placement from Allen, and it resulted in an incompletion because Williams couldn't make the contested catch. If this play resulted in a completion, the Bills would be in field goal range with a minute left to play and a stop clock, but still the game wasn't over. On the next play, the Texans go with the exact same coverage and the Bills called a curls concept. The route concept doesn't really matter though because Allen again faces immediate pressure as a result of a blown block from John Feliciano. He does evade the sack and makes a nice throw downfield to John Brown, but Brown loses track of where the sideline is and the play results in an incompletion, which sets up yet another third and long. This time, the Bills call a dagger concept on the left side and an out route on the right. Allen's job is to progress from left to right, first looking at the dagger concept, then at the out route from John Brown. Since the Texans again call cover one thief, the dagger concept isn't really an option, which leaves the out route on the right. The pocket is kept clean and Allen throws a nice ball on the sideline to convert on third down and keep the drive going. Now, after another first down and a spike, the Bills have second down at the Houston 29 with 20 seconds left to go in regulation. The Texans again come out in a double high safety look and the Bills called a three verticals concept called middle read, which has two go routes from the number one receivers and an option route from the number two on the play side. This option route will either be a post or a seam depending on whether the defense is in a middle of the field open look or middle of the field closed look. If there's a safety sitting in the deep middle of the field, the route from Cole Beasley will be a post and his job will be to find space between the hook zone linebackers and the safety over the top. If the defense is in a mofo look, meaning the safeties are leaving the middle of the field open, Beasley will run a seam to get into that open space. The Texans called Tampa 2 again, so the middle of the field is open, but Beasley's route is not an option because the Mike linebacker drops deep into the seam hole. Allen knows that the best places to attack Tampa 2 are the holes on the sideline between the curl flat cornerbacks and the deep half safeties, so he wants to hit Duke Williams on the sideline in that hole. Williams gets right into that hole between the cornerback and the safety, but by the time Allen has a chance to look Duke's way, he's got pressure in his face from an unblocked blitzer who Dawson Knox failed to pick up, which forces him to throw off his back foot and causes the pass to be off target. If I saw this throw in a vacuum without context, I wouldn't have had much faith in Allen putting the ball on target, but considering what he was doing leading up to this play, I truly believe that if he had a clean pocket, Allen would have completed this pass for a touchdown. But even then, the game still wasn't over. The Bills kicked the field goal to send the game to overtime and would get a chance on offense after forcing the Texans to punt. After a first down and a couple of incompletions, the Bills had third and nine on their own 43. The Texans called cover one and the Bills knew they were in man coverage because the outside cornerback lined up at the top of the screen opposite Devin Singletary is a linebacker, which almost always means man coverage. 
The Bills call a mesh concept designed to hit Duke Williams on a crossing route, but that crosser doesn't get open, and Allen feels the pressure coming from behind him, so he extends the play and somehow finds Devin Singletary downfield to convert on third and long. A one-yard gain on a run play and an incompletion set up another third and nine on the Houston 42. This time, Houston came out in a single high safety look with a crowded line of scrimmage and man coverage across the board. The Bills knew the call was man coverage because the defender lined up at outside cornerback on top of the screen is again a linebacker responsible for covering Devin Singletary. So they responded with a design pick play with Singletary and Cole Beasley at the top of the screen. But that linebacker, Zach Cunningham, immediately recognizes the pick play and legally initiates contact with Singletary to stop the play dead. When Allen sees that the concept that was called is no longer an option, he scrambles for four yards, but the play was called back for a blindside block on the right tackle, Cody Ford, which set up third and 24 and forced the Bills to punt. Like most Bills fans, I didn't agree with the call, and it's unfortunate that the season came down to a bad call, but it really didn't need to. There were plenty of chances for the Bills to win this game, but in my opinion, Josh Allen did everything he could, and the loss was definitely not on him. Now, another thing that makes me think Allen can be a franchise quarterback is the fact that other quarterbacks who possess a similar skill set to Allen's have been successful in today's NFL. Take his new division rival and 2015 NFL MVP Cam Newton as an example. Allen's 2019 season was very similar to Newton's 2017 season, and keep in mind that this is after the MVP season but before the shoulder injury, so this is prime Cam Newton. Their completion percentages and average yards per attempt totals were nearly identical, and Cam had the edge in total turnovers, but Allen had more total touchdowns and a better passer rating with a worse supporting cast. Allen's receivers dropped 7% of his passes compared to 4.5% for Cam, and the Buffalo offensive line allowed a pressure rate of 36.1% compared to the Panthers' 32.7%. Cam's supporting cast in 2017 was not great by any means, but it was definitely better than what Allen was working with last year, and Allen still put up better numbers. And the final thing that makes me think Allen has a bright future is his constant improvement. It's no secret that his start to the 2019 season was not great. In weeks 1-4, to four, his completion percentage was slightly over 60%, his average yards per attempt was about 6.9, he averaged 1.5 touchdowns per game compared to 2 turnovers per game, and his passer rating was under 70. But then in weeks 5-16, to 16, Allen's completion percentage and yards per attempt decreased slightly, but he averaged more than 2 touchdowns per game, less than half a turnover per game, and his passer rating went up by more than 30. Now, you can attribute this to the changes in Buffalo's offensive scheme, which was responsible for Allen's sudden success to an extent, but there is no question that he just keeps getting better. He shifted to using his legs to extend plays and throw downfield rather than scrambling impulsively and taking a hit from a linebacker, and he's demonstrated a more reliable ability to read defenses. Take a look at this third and short play from the Thanksgiving game between the Bills and the Cowboys. When Allen breaks the huddle, the Bills are in trips right with a tight end, Dawson Knox lined up as the weak side number one receiver in a reduced or nasty split, meaning Knox is lined up inside the numbers rather than outside. Allen sees the one deep safety, which usually means cover one man or cover three zone, but the defensive back lined up opposite Knox is leveraged inside, which is a dead giveaway for man coverage. In cover three, the defensive backs almost always align with outside leverage because they aren't worried about being beat to the inside, especially when the split from one of the receivers is reduced like Knox's is here. The hook zone linebackers have the inside responsibility and the defensive backs are responsible for anything vertical, but in man coverage, the defensive backs are responsible for slants and drags over the middle. So in an effort to prevent their assigned man from winning to the inside, they'll often line up with inside leverage rather than outside leverage. Because the defensive back responsible for Dawson Knox is leveraged inside and there's one high safety, the call is most likely cover one, so Allen changes what he called in the huddle to a mesh concept on a bunch right. Mesh is a combination of two drag routes that cross over each other and is a man coverage killer, so Allen throws to his speedy receiver Isaiah McKenzie on the drag route and picks up the first down. In his second season, Allen was given much more freedom in terms of calling plays at the line of scrimmage, and it's clear that he made significant progress in his ability to identify and exploit coverages pre-snap. Now, I know I've spent the majority of this video talking about the things that make me think Allen has a bright future, and I'll be the first to admit that he has a lot of work to do before he is a true franchise quarterback, but there's a reason that pretty much everyone who really watches this guy closely thinks he's good, and the players included him in their top 100 list. 
Analysts and fans who still think Allen is a bust are either clinging to their pre-draft notions or getting too caught up in the basic quarterback metrics that consistently fail to accurately represent a player's true performance. The combination of Allen's play late in close games and his constant improvement throughout his two-year career outweigh the overthrows and inconsistent accuracy. That's going to be it for this week's video. I'm thinking about taking a look at what went wrong for the Ravens offense in the playoffs because I feel like that really hasn't been talked about enough, but that's going to be it from me for now. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.